And hello, my name is Mr. Schulman, and we are going to learn about, as it says up there, community planning strategies, looking at the key differences and similarities between something called smart growth and urban sprawl. And as you glance at this political cartoon, um, it's supposed to be a small little joke making fun of smart growth. All right, here we go. Um, the first thing I want to do is quickly review with you something we've learned about many times in this class, federalism. And it is a main component of this topic of community development. So here you have an image with the concept of power. And you'll notice that the power is going towards the national, state, and local government. And that's really what federalism is. Um, federalism is all about how the power of government is shared and divided among the different government levels. Um, remember the concept here, local problems need local solutions. If you have a problem that's only affecting the city or the county you live in, you're going to need the city or county government to fix it. And that is what federalism is all about. And as I like to tell my students, you need to know where to complain. When you have a problem with the government, you have to know who you're going to complain to. Um, reviewing a little bit here the three levels of our legislative branch, remember the goal of any legislative branch or the main power is to make laws. And as we've talked about at the national level, we have Congress. It's bicameral, meaning it has two chambers, the Senate and the House um, in the state of Maryland, which we'll be talking a little bit more about today. You have the Maryland General Assembly, which makes laws that deal with the state of Maryland. Um, it is also bicameral, meaning two chambers. Um, and then in Prince George's County, where we live in, we have the Prince George's County Council, which here is unicameral. It only has one chamber. Um, and so if you have a problem with trash pickup, schools, roads, in some cases, you're going to want to complain to the Prince George's County Council. All right. I want to just quickly go over this concept here before we go any further. The concept is efficient. And so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at what efficient means. Um, efficient, whether you're talking about any type of resource, and efficient is getting the most out of something, using it all for all it's worth. And I use this quick little illustration to showcase efficient to my students. On the left here, you see how you have this piece of land and you have four homes on that one piece of land. And then on the right here, you have this piece of land that looks similar in size, but you only have this one piece, this one house on that piece of land. Well, if you were thinking which, which image is using land more efficiently, which one would you pick? Yep, it would be the one on the left because you have four homes here on that one piece of land. So you're getting the most out of that piece of land. And that really is the basis of smart growth, uh, a type of development that we're going to talk more about today. All right, what is community development? Well, the idea here is any type of development is changing the way land is used. Um, you're really just building more homes, more roads, businesses. Uh, if you take a look at this picture here, you know, you're, you're turning maybe natural land into roads. You're, you're making it more industrial in nature. Now, where is the government involved? The government's always involved. And the concept you have to know here is something called zoning. All right? The government doesn't open businesses. It doesn't you know, make money from businesses. What the government does, and we're talking local government here, they decide how land will be used. That is what zoning is. For instance, um, they will decide if a piece of land can be used for a commercial, like a business, uh, for housing, for a park, maybe for a stadium. Um, they have to decide, you know, is it going to affect traffic? Is it going to affect the noise level of the community? Um, is it going to maybe increase crime rate? These are all things that the zoning boards will try to determine before they allow a company or some type of private uh, organization to come in and build. 
So zoning is deciding how land will be used. A zoning board is the government agency at the local level that approves any land development. And here you have a picture of what you know a typical zoning board meeting would look like. Looks real fun, right? Um, so you have people up here. These are the members of the zoning board. You have maybe constituents, people that might be affected by the change in development, and they are giving their opinions to the zoning board before they make their decision. Some of the pros and cons of community development. So why do you think development can be a good thing? Why do you think development can be a bad thing? I'm not going to give you these answers now. These are things you should be thinking about, asking your teacher about if you still don't know. And as we go through the rest of this little video, you might start to think, oh, okay, there are good and bad things with development. So you might want to come back to this question. Another concept you have to be familiar with is infrastructure. And this is a very important concept. Infrastructure are all of the items you need to make development happen. If you want to, you know, if you want to have businesses and restaurants and homes, well, you need to have pipes to flush the toilet. You need to have an electricity grid to provide power to your structure. Um, you need to have cable and internet connections to, you know, get on the web and, and watch videos like this. All of those things are infrastructure. Um, the yeah, a little bit cut off here, but infrastructure is really expensive to build. Um, it's underground. You have to dig up a lot. It's stuff you might not always see, but it's stuff we use all the time. Like I said, electricity, the sewers. I mean, when you flush the toilet, you know, you want to know it's going somewhere uh, else. You don't want it staying in your house. Um, water treatment facilities, you know, making our water clean. Any roads. Roads would be considered infrastructure. It allows development to occur. Uh, sidewalks, if you you know, if you're riding bikes, walking, running, uh, telephone and cable service. I mean, you have to have if if you want to be able to go on the internet, watch TV. You need to have the infrastructure to do that. Um, and then you also have schools and hospitals because let's say you're building these brand new communities, you're going to have all these children in the area. Guess what? You're going to need to support them. Yep lots of schools and lots of hospitals. So infrastructure, the items that you need for development. All of this stuff, all of this stuff that we typically don't think about. All right. The main the main concepts we're looking at today are urban sprawl and smart growth. And so what I want you to do is I want we're gonna watch these two introductory videos that talk about urban sprawl and smart growth and as you watch each video what I want you to do is I want you to focus on the main characteristics of each development strategy okay these are ways that governments can allow or in some cases not allow um, businesses and home developments to be created Let's watch the sprawl video first. This is Las Vegas, Nevada. The sequence of images from space is from October 1984 to January 2009, as photographed by Landsat 5. They demonstrate the rapid spread of Greater Las Vegas into the adjacent desert. The population of Clark County which contains Las Vegas and nearby cities, grew from 560,000 in 1984 to about 2 million in 2009. From 1999 to 2009, the population increased by more than one-third. Computing the differences between the first and last images in the sequence reveals where growth has been most intense. Lighter areas show more change. The city's core is dark, meaning it experienced relatively little change over the period. Most change occurred on the brighter outer edges. The same image reveals a significant drop in the Lake Mead Reservoir during this time. 
Growth demands attention to many factors that allow sustainable urban development. Water resources, energy, transportation, land use, waste disposal, and the stewardship of the local economy. So when you, the purpose of this video as you watched it when you were looking at sprawl, you'll notice that the core of the city stayed the same, but what happened on the outer edges? Yeah, you had a lot more development. It kept expanding, moving out and moving out. All right, quick 30 second video to talk about smart growth. And as you watch this, consider the characteristics and also consider how smart growth development is very different than urban sprawl. It's about designing communities that are more vibrant. That has homes, that has apartments, that has shops. Mixed use, compact, walkable. Hope it has some trees, hope it has some green space. Where people have more transportation choices and where our daily needs and amenities, like our schools, our jobs, our restaurants, and our shops, are located close to where we live. It also helps conserve land, so it works for the planet at the same time. All right, so smart growth, little bit different here, right? Little bit different here. In this case, you are saving land, you're utilizing something that already exists, you're trying to protect the environment. Let's get some more details now. All right, so urban sprawl, urban sprawl, all right. Good definition of urban sprawl. It's when you develop new suburbs, particularly suburbs, by building on what we call green space, whether it's forests, farms, swamps, traditionally natural land that has not been touched. Now, obviously, farms have been touched, but it's still considered green space because there's no homes or building developments on there. Um, if you've ever been to the National Harbor outside of Washington, D.C., that was all just green space. And then they built and built on that, and they've expanded it with the hotels and the resorts and the restaurants and the shopping. And all of that started from just, you know, green space. Um, now, sprawl. What happens with sprawl? Well, you typically destroy green space. Businesses, homes, and apartments are usually much far from each other. And because of that, you usually have lots of cars because in order to get to different places, you have to drive. When you have to drive, guess what? You get lots of pollution and lots of traffic. Now, because you're building brand new suburbs and developments, you have to build infrastructure. It's usually not there underneath the forest, so you have to build it. And that can be very expensive. And typically, just like the picture says, this is a really, you know, simple symbolization um, of what urban sprawl looks like. Smart growth, on the other hand, and this is something that the state of Maryland has been promoting for many years. The idea of smart growth is that you are revitalizing, you are restoring an existing city or suburb um, by protecting green space. We're not developing on farms and swamps and forests. Instead, we're taking something that already exists and we're making it better. The University Town Center in Hyattsville is a great example of smart growth. All right, back to smart growth. I got rid of that uh, random picture in there. So. Um, in the Hyattsville area of Maryland, you have the University Town Center where you have a Five Guys restaurant, you have movie theaters, you have a metro station close by, you have Qdoba, you have movie, um, movie theater, I said that they're building a new grocery store, you have housing units, you have apartments, you have condos, you have office buildings, you have a lot of these things very close to each other. So the idea of smart growth is really just the opposite of urban sprawl. You're, you're thinking, you know, you're, it's called smart growth, so you're being smart, you're, you're thinking about it a little bit more, you're preserving your green space, you're mixing your land use, and because you mix it, it's a lot easier to get to shops and businesses if you live really close. Um, and because people tend to live very close, communities become walkable with many transportation choices like the metro or subway, buses, biking, um, 
uh, streetcars in some places. Um, you get a variety of housing choices, you know, whether you want to get a single family house, apartment, condo, whatever. Usually you have a variety of choices in smart growth. And because you're building on something that already exists, you still might have to build some infrastructure, but you're not going to have to start from scratch. So you can save some money, save the planet, and use some existing infrastructure. And here in this image, which was getting in the way earlier, you see how you have all these people. You have, you know, you notice that the development is going upwards. Um, you have a train, you have bikes, you have trees, you have cafes, you have homes. I mean, everything is really, really close together. All right, here's a good example of a before and after with urban sprawl. Here you had a farm, um, you know, a lot of green space, very beautiful, serene, and then boom, <laughs> they turned it into a housing development where all the homes tend to look alike. You'll notice that there's all these streets. You'll also notice that the development is very low to the ground. It's not very high. Now, in the Hyattsville, Maryland area, we have something called the University Town Center. This is what it looked like beforehand, and you'll notice it was just this, you know, empty, vacant parking lot with some buildings in the background. And here you have all these politicians uh, showing how they're a big fan of this project. And since they've built it, and they're still building parts of it, you'll notice that you have a lot more buildings and homes and stuff, and it's all really close together. And you'll notice that everything is being built vertically, being built upwards, so you don't have to sprawl and spread out very much. So you have your apartments, you have your condos, you have your movie theaters and restaurants, and they're going to put a grocery store over here. Um, so everything is very, very close together. And I'm going to skip that, and I'm going to come to the last slide here. And if you're a Maryland student, you have to take the government HSA. This is a released HSA question that you might have seen before from your teacher. The question asks, Maryland's Smarter Growth Laws of 2004 encourages the building of new homes in vacant, which means empty, city lots. Which of these is a reason Maryland's government passed this law? Just to remind you, it's not just in Maryland where you have smart growth, but because I teach in Maryland and have to follow the Maryland curriculum, yeah, well, we're going to be talking about Maryland. Have you picked the answer? Do you think it's A, eliminating the distribution of unsanitary water? Nah. Do you think it's B, preventing the overdevelopment of green spaces? Mm, that sounds okay. To encourage farmers to produce larger crops? Sounds good, but does that have anything to do with smart growth? To encourage more people to own a business? Once again, that sounds great, but does that have anything to do with smart growth? All right, you guessed it. Yep, the answer is B, to prevent the overdevelopment of green spaces. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that helped explain the concept of community development, of all of the parts that are involved, how the government's involved in zoning, the different strategies you have, the smart growth ideas versus the old school urban sprawl strategies. Feel free to put some comments if you have any questions in YouTube. And if you, you know, want to get questions answered quicker, you can always ask your teacher. Good luck studying and good luck taking your tests.